Hey, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete, coming to you guys today with a very important episode. I'm soaking wet because it's pool time. 103 degrees Fahrenheit in Phoenix, Arizona, on like May 3rd. Super hot. And I can just sense that my trees are starting to go, what the heck is this all about? You know, some of the trees are not native like peach trees, persimmon trees, avocado trees, things like that, especially new ones that you've just planted, need some help in the summer to keep themselves shaded a little bit. And you need to create a little bit of a microclimate around those trees and in Arizona, that means shade. So this is a very important episode for those of you in the Southwest gardening or anywhere where the sun is a little bit impolite, okay? If you guys wanna see over here, I got this beautiful avocado tree that's looking really nice. This guy's called an Aravipa Arizona avocado because they found a tree in Aravipa Canyon in Arizona here that's been growing for over 120 years and some of the rare fruit growers got the budwood grafted onto a salt tolerant rootstock and now boom we have these Aravipa Arizona avocado trees and I got this one as a one and a half foot tall tree from Seamus O'Leary Tropical Fruit Trees and if you guys look at this post right here when I planted this tree it was at this wet line right here halfway up the post. And now a year later, he's taller than me. I'm 6'1", or 6'2", with shoes on. The tree's got me now. It's a little taller than I am. And so I wanna show you guys how I'm gonna shade him. It's gonna look like this. This is a Fuyu persimmon that I just planted. My friend Jay, who runs the Phoenix Fruit Growers Facebook page, he uh, gave me the heads up that the Lowe's by his house, out by Apache Junction, had some really nice fruit trees, and boom, I got this nice persimmon. And so I already shaded him on this face, on this face, and the top. And this way he's got a little bit of protection, a little bit of microclimate until he's established. Usually the first one or two summers. So if you're gonna plant a new fruit tree in the Phoenix area, I recommend planting the tree under the shade of a parent tree, a mature one like a parent guards the child, a tall, mature shade tree can help a new fruit tree. Or if you don't have that, you can use shade cloth. And I got this shade cloth from Arizona Bag Company. They make you buy a minimum of 50 bucks worth, so I'll go there expecting to pay that, but you spend 50 bucks and you get a really great deal. Okay, I got this whole pile of shade cloth down here. I got a staple gun, I got a rubber hammer, I got a drill with some screws, and uh, that's it, we're ready to go. A ladder? So let me show you guys what I'm gonna do here. I got these two stakes. It's really important that you take your saw and cut the bottom of the stake on a 45 degree angle so it's sharp like a knife. And then stick that sucker in the ground, just like that. Then get your ladder and hammer these stakes in. Okay, we've got the stakes hammered in. Two rules, rule number one, get in your pool and get wet and stay cool out there, but don't slip. Okay, rule number two, make sure that you have these stakes positioned in a way where the shade cloth is not going to be touching your tree. So if you notice, the tree is kind of hanging out the sides over here, but that's okay because this guy's already been in the ground for one summer, so he's already hardened off. If he was a brand new tree with his first summer, I would definitely cover every leaf with the shade cloth, but not touching the tree, okay? Make sure there's an air space between your shade cloth and the tree, but since this is summer number two, he's a little bit harder, he can take a little more, plus he's starting to get bark inside here, and that's a good sign, it means that he's getting mature. So I'm gonna be mostly just concerned with the top, but this guy's pushing six and a half feet tall now, and so these stakes need to be taller. So you have to put little extenders on them. So I got my drill and I got my screws and we're gonna make a little bit of a backyard impromptu extender. There are many, many different ways to put shit on your trees and this is just the one I'm showing for this video but if you guys have some more money or some more time or you only have one tree and you're trying to baby that tree like it's your little infant, okay, or a spoiled dog, make sure that uh, you put some sort of elaborate shade cloth on there that looks aesthetically pleasing as well. The goal for me and my buddy Aravipa over here is that he continues to grow all summer long, which means that he needs some sun protection when it gets above 105, because the Phoenix summers are no joke. They can kill you if you don't have shelter. 
And so the shade cloth is the shelter. But number two, I don't want him to be completely shaded because then he'll get no sun and that will also hurt him because trees need to photosynthesize. They need the sun for nutrients. So we got to put a shade cloth that's just about 30 to 50%. So sometimes I do a 30%, sometimes I do a 30% and I layer it twice. And that's about as dense as I get. Remember how a few months ago I gave you guys a uh, one year update of the Aravipa? He's already grown a foot taller from that video. And I told you guys I wanted him by April of 2017 to be beyond my reach. My reach is about eight, eight and a half feet. So I want him to be eight and a half feet tall and he's getting there, he's pretty close. All this new growth too, it keeps coming off. So he really has shown no sign of slowing down and it's gonna be 102, 103 degrees today. So I'm gonna put this shit on the top, but just one layer. And when it gets to be 105 to 108, I'll add that second layer. When I throw the shade cloth on top, I make sure I have a big piece and then I cut it when it's already on top. That way I know I'm cutting it to size. All right, you guys can see how we got it on top now. So now he's got some shade. And I encourage you guys to put your stuff in the position of the tree and go over here and get inside here and put your body underneath the shade and oh, oh, it's instantaneously more pleasant underneath here. I don't even need sunscreen. This is great, all right. So now I'm gonna trim them up so that no part of this shade cloth is touching the leaves of the avocado. So a nice pair of scissors is all you need and this piece I'm cutting off, I'm gonna save because I could easily reattach this piece that I'm cutting off when the temperatures get above 105 by using my staple gun and just stapling it back to these wooden posts. My system is almost perfect. <laughs> Hardly. It is possible that high Phoenix winds or the monsoon can blow this around. So I'm gonna staple gun the shade cloth to the, the posts. And as I'm doing that, make sure that no part of the fabric is touching the leaves. Hopefully next year, I could do some vegan athlete videos for you guys eating the fruits. Cause I think next year I'm predicting that he'll be mature enough to fruit. We'll see what happens. There you have it guys. Hit the like button for me, subscribe, check me out on Facebook. My private gardening group is open to the public. Really, I'll approve your request. Urban Gardening in Arizona with Jake Mace. Go check it out, it's a great group. Link is down below. In the description below this video in the comments, let's get a dialogue going of what are the fruit trees that you've planted that need shade? Tell me in the comments down below. Before we close this video out, let me show you guys a couple trees I've already shaded here for the spring at my home in the Phoenix area. Of course, we have the new persimmon. He's been shaded. Follow me over this one. I have this area shaded because it's a delicate star fruit tree in a pretty hot area with some new mangoes I just planted. So we're trying to create a little microclimate here as well. But the star fruit tree is looking very nice and the leaves look really healthy. I have a mature three year old papaya tree bringing his leaves back for the spring. He's even done multiple branching this year. Hopefully I'll get tons of papayas. They've already started flowering at the top. And down below I gave him some kids. I planted one Tai Nung number two and one Mexican and they've already quadrupled in size my man David Rosenberg from the Arizona Rare Fruit Growers grows them from seeds. So they were seeds in January and now they're this tall in May. They'll be as tall as their mom pretty soon. I shaded this Christmas loquat that I picked up from Seamus O'Leary's because it's his first year, first summer in the ground. And I know from experience, the loquats do need some sun protection on their first or second summer. So boom, got the shade on top and on the western side and so far he's continued to put off new growth and looks fantastic. And of course you guys watched me here at the Vegan Athlete YouTube channel right there. If you click on that link, you watched me plant this Jabu de Kaba. He's doubled in size so far in terms of bushiness. He's got a little bit those leaf cutters, those leaf cutter bees. They've been cutting out some little moons of the leaves. That's okay. He's got lots of leaves and he's doing fantastic. I also shaded him and he's doing great so far. Hopefully continues to grow all through the summer 
Guys, I love having you with me on these videos. You guys make me more professional because I have to bring my A game to show you guys how to grow your food at home. So make sure you guys go vegan. Have one day this week where you eat completely vegan the whole day and try to grow that food at home. And I'll see you guys back here next time. <laughs>